Duke Energy, it's one of the largest power companies in the U.S. Our own Alex Steele spoke to Lynn Good, Duke's chairman and CEO, from the BNEF event here in New York City. They talked about the way forward on the $7 billion Atlantic Coast Pipeline, which would carry shale gas from West Virginia down to North Carolina. So Atlantic Coast Pipeline has been under development, Alex, for about four years. It has undergone the most comprehensive environmental review of any pipeline. We've been very successful with permits at both the state and the federal level, but as you know, we've been challenged over the last couple of months with findings in the Fourth Circuit Court, and so we're working through those. I think what gets lost in this conversation is that that pipeline is so important to our customers, delivering low-cost natural gas, diversification, operating flexibility, really economic development in the eastern part of North Carolina in particular. So we remain committed to the project and we'll work through these challenges that are underway right now. What would, you, what would get you uncommitted? I think the uh, ongoing delays could be a challenge, but I, I look at what we are experiencing as one of the challenges of building infrastructure, and we are committed to working through it. We believe, as I said a moment ago, that the environmental review that has been undertaken with this project is second to none, and the benefits to our customers are so extraordinary that we believe it's important to keep pushing forward on this infrastructure. What about the cost impacts? The cost has also been creeping up as delays have crept up as well. Uh, how confident are you that it is going to be between seven and 7.8 billion? You know, I'm confident based on what I see right now, Alex, and we are doing everything we can to minimize costs during this period of construction suspension that is underway. And so, you know, that is part of the uh, process of building infrastructure is managing that in-service date, managing the costs, but also working through the permitting and core challenges that come with it. So talk a little bit about a plan B. I mean, let's say it gets too expensive or the delays are, are too long. You do have to get the natural gas down there. So like, what's a realistic plan B that you could think another of? Another project. We would have to come up with another project. And I think about our uh, local distribution system, which is the delivery of gas into that area. Atlantic Coast Pipeline was sized and developed with a time frame to meet the needs of our customers. Mm -hmm. So if we can't get Atlantic Coast Pipeline in place, we will need to build other infrastructure to support that, probably from eastern to western North Carolina, as opposed to from you know, the north-south. Uh, but that's something that remains a plan B. We continue to look at it, but we're committed to Atlantic Coast Pipeline. Do you uh, pass any costs along to the ratepayers 100% or how does that go? It's under contract, uh, Alex, and so we have negotiated contracts with customers that are in place today. Uh, we do have opportunities to reset price uh, if there are extraordinary delays in the project, but we're always looking for what makes the most sense for customers, but also the most sense for our investors. So I know you're committed, and I definitely get that. Is there a time frame or cost that you say, I'm out, like $9 billion? an extra year delay, like you have to have those kind of risk models. You know, Alex, at this point, I don't have a specific thing that I would share with you. Our commitment is to work through these challenges because we have such confidence in the environmental review that has undertaken the business case for this for our customers, the commitment to our communities because this represents incredible investment and economic development. That's where our mind is and our heart is right now is to continue pushing forward with this pipeline. So moving on to sort of a broader impact of climate change been your uh, objective take on what's happened with PG&E uh, in California and the longer term repercussions for a power provider and utility? Well, the wildfire situation in California has certainly been challenging and my heart goes out to the customers and the communities that have been impacted. For us in the southeast, we have been impacted more by hurricanes. Uh, Alex, the wildfire risk is not something that is front and center for us. And so we think about that risk as something we have to manage well. We've continued to invest in our grid for hardening and resiliency and of course having a response when a hurricane hits to get power back as quickly as we possibly can. I think that adaptation is going to be important as we continue to work through you know, what the weather events that come in the future.